everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing another acrylic painting and I'm very excited for this one. So I'm going to be painting on wood today. Here is my wood board and I'm also using my Dervy and Matisse paints as well as this uh, all-purpose sealer here which is going to help seal the wood so that my painting will last a very long time. So I've been wanting to do more fantasy style artworks lately and you probably noticed that recently in a few of my acrylic paintings but I really wanted to try and push it this time and add a really nice sort of almost mystical feeling to a painting and um, just really push with the colors and play with the colors and I also really want to do a more detailed artwork this time and I got the idea to do a really pretty like foresty painting with like water but I wanted the water to be like more of a greeny blue color and really push the vibrancy of that and uh, yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun so to start off I'm just adding in a little pencil sketch here this isn't too detailed or anything like that I'm basically just adding in some shapes which are going to be my rocks and we are just going straight in here with a, a transparent red oxide and I've mixed a little bit of um, just like a, a glazing medium into it so I can get a nice really nice sort of transparent look which is really going to help me with adding in some textures and just maybe showing a little bit of that uh, sort of wood texture through but I'm not too worried about that in this artwork in previous artworks I feel like I really wanted to sort of preserve that wood and um, that really works for a lot of paintings but I don't think too much for a forest <laughs> um, but yeah we're just going to add in these rocks here and I'm just sort of layering in that paint quite messily I am actually very enjoying the sort of like textures that I can get with this paint here since it is thinned out and you can really see my brush strokes so I'm playing with that a little bit and seeing if I can get some like sort of like zigzaggy sort of rocky texture and also just like overlaying um, colors here and there to add in some shadows as well as just show like the separation between different rocks <laughs> and as you can see I've mixed a little bit more of a burnt umber into the paint here with some more glazing medium so it's still sort of transparent and we are just going in and adding more shadows because I really want to deepen these paints here and make a really nice sort of contrasty rocky face and um, yeah just play with the colors a little bit so I'm just trying to make sure that it's all nice and warm because this painting is going to have a very warm feeling to it I don't think I'm going to add many cool colors to this at all maybe just to the sky with a sort of more of a sky blue now I'm just going in here and I'm just adding in some highlights. Now the first layer I did was transparent and that's just so that I had a nice little blend so it wasn't too jarring. But after that I went in with some, uh, I think it's like a goldy yellow kind of color. And I'm just adding in little dabbles here to areas on the rocks that are going to catch the light. And I'm pushing the warmth as well with this yellow here. We don't even have that much white in the highlights because I want this to feel really nice and warm, like I said before. And now we are moving on to the water. So as you can see, these rocks here, they kind of don't really look too much like rocks. They kind of look like piles of poo. But once I add in other details, it's going to make a lot more sense. So with the blue here, I'm actually using a sort of aquary blue kind of color. And um, I am not going too cold with it, as I said before. And I really love the idea of a bluey green water that's like super saturated and bright. And I just think it's going to add a really nice sort of magical feel to it. After this, as you can see, I've got a blue here. I believe it is called Australian Sky Blue. <laughs> and um, this is pretty much the only cool tone color I'm going to use in this artwork. But I really needed to have a different blue for the sky so that it looked completely different to the water. And you could tell that one's water and one is sky. So now that that is coming together, it's actually starting to look more like rocks and water. <laughs> but I still want to add a little bit more shadows here and there in those rocks to push the contrast. And also just like separate and refine these rock shapes so that they look more like rocks, if you get what I mean. And um, soon I'm going to add... 
So for the water, I started off with that same blue that I had for the base color, but I added a little bit of a cobalt blue color to it, just a tiny bit, so that we could have subtle uh, changes in the hue and little subtle shadows in the water too. And um, I just sort of blended that horizontally with my brush to get some nice little soft um, sort of water textures in there. And after this, I decided I wanted to add in some reflections to those rocks. And I actually really liked the way that I did that. I pretty much just grabbed the same colors that I used for the rocks. And then I mixed a little bit of that into the same blue color that I used for the water. And since those colors are mixing, it is pretty much the perfect tone to add for the reflections of the rocks because the colors are sort of going to mix with um, it bouncing off the bluey green color of the water as well as like the subtle uh, like look of the rocks from underneath the water. After this, I got my palette knife and now we're adding in some white here and I'm just going over the areas where the rocks are like coming out of the surface of the water. And this is the thing that's really going to make it look so much like water and honestly, I just find that really satisfying to do because once you add that white, it goes from like colors to uh, a picture. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but it really does. And I'll have to credit Bob Ross for that technique because that is how I learned it. Now this here is one of the most fun parts of this illustration that I had. I wanted to have like some subtle little waterfalls and water trickling down from above. And I pretty much just used the same blue as the rest of the water, but I painted it carefully and I made sure to pay attention to where the water is flowing. Like maybe it'll come down from the top and it'll bounce off a certain rock or it'll go around a rock. And then where is it when it like sort of falls down into the water? And um, I just found that very, very satisfying. And honestly, I think that it looks so cool. This definitely adds to the um, sort of nature-y but also magical kind of vibe that I'm going for. So after this, I am moving on to plants now because we can't have a mythical, like magical forest without obviously plants because it's just rock and water at the moment. So we're going in with some dark greens and I used a few different greens. I used a hooker's green and also a permanent light green, which is more of a transparent color. So I got some nice little blends there. And um, for the trees, I pretty much just got a Van Dyke brown and I softened it up with a little bit of a cream kind of color. And I wanted it very different to the brown of the rocks. So I made it more of a slightly cooler, slightly more pinky, sort of purpley hue kind of brown. And that really helped. And I also tried to make sure that the roots of these trees were very swirly and flowy and they curled around a lot. And that might not happen in real life, but we are pushing the fantasy here. So these are sort of fantasy curly kind of trees. After this, I'm going in with the plants that I uh, went in earlier, but I'm adding in some highlights here. So what I basically did was I got that permanent green light and then I mixed a little bit of white into it to make it more of a uh, opaque kind of color. And then I also mixed a bit of yellow into there as well to sort of move the hue to a sort of warmer kind of color. And this is what I'm basically using for the highlights of these plants here. And um, yeah, I think once I add in those highlights, they really sort of show more and um, we're refining the details and it's looking a lot more sharper now, whereas before it was kind of like softer looking and um, yeah, I just really love adding highlights to things. I just find it super satisfying. So for the plants, I used a few different types. I did a few sort of grassy type looking plants, as you can see, and I did a few sort of more leafy kind of fern style and I also went in there and I, later on I added in some little speckly leaf kind of ones which were really fun and with these plants I try and just like I don't try and worry too much about each leaf being perfect because plants aren't really like that and if everything is defined and outlined and you know nothing's covered up it's also going to look a little bit unnatural and that's not what we're going for. So now once I've got those plants nice and uh, defined and highlighted, I'm going to go in here because the top part of the painting looks a little bit too 
uh, plain and sparse for me. So with these trees, I really wanted to think of a leaf type that was different to all of the plants underneath. So I really didn't want to just do like, like bushy kind of leaves. And I actually decided on a sort of weeping tree style. And honestly, I really love the contrast between the soft, you know, curly, uh, flowy kind of um, like branches and roots and then the weeping very straight pointing in the exact same direction leaves that are coming off of those branches and honestly I really like that detail and I think that it makes it look quite interesting. Now for the colors I used a mix of a uh, sort of reddish kind of colors for these leaves but also I mixed a, a bit of green in there as well and then I also used a little bit more green so that we have sort of like a dual kind of color for those leaves. So maybe they are sort of like turning red as the leaves age or maybe it's starting to turn into autumn, who knows? This is a fantasy world so they just look like that because they look pretty. So after this, I want to add in a little cabin here or a little cottage, as I'll say. I really wanted to sort of push the sort of nature-y but also sort of fantasy magic kind of vibe. And I decided a little cottage in the forest surrounded by magical plants and beautiful flowing water would be a pretty magical sort of painting. So in my mind, this little cottage here and the little boat as well down below, which is going to be tied to one of the roots of the trees. They belong to a witch who lives in this forest. And this witch is a sort of nature witch. She loves plants and uh, she gets her magic from these plants, but also she takes care of this forest and takes care of the water and all of the animals that live in this uh, sort of, you know, fantasy world as well. And I think that that's really like a cool story. So of course with this boat I wanted to do the same sort of style of reflections underneath as well so it looks like it is part of uh, the scene and I also went in and I just wanted to use a few of my paint pens here and there to add a little bit more like of a highlight to some of the details of this because I really wanted to sort of you know um, just refine some of those tree branches and make them look a little bit brighter and um, also I wanted to go in with my paint pen and add in some highlights to these plants because I kind of find it very difficult to do very, very thin textures with paint brushes because I'm still a little bit heavy handed. <laughs> so sometimes paint pens just make things a little bit easier for me. After this, I decided I really wanted to sort of push uh, that red that was in the um, the leaves of the trees above and I wanted to add that somewhere else in the painting so I decided to add in some magical looking flowers. Now I wanted these flowers to not look just beautiful but I wanted them to have a, a, a almost like a creepy vibe to them like maybe they are like maybe they're like dangerous flowers maybe they like spit stuff at you <laughs> or maybe they're just like poisonous but i just wanted to have a slightly creepy vibe to these flowers to sort of push that fantasy feeling so i decided with four petals because that's not usually what you see and the petals are rounded but they also pointed at the ends to sort of give off that slight creepy vibe and then the center of the flowers just have these like little balls of yellow and they almost look like they're filled with like liquid or something i'm not sure but that's just the vibe that i was trying to go for with these flowers and i think that it works pretty well so here's the final results and honestly i really love this painting I had a lot of fun doing it and I feel like I really sort of pushed myself and uh, tried to push the limits of my painting a little bit here but honestly I think I learned quite a bit and I had a lot of fun and I love that little cottage as well so anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something maybe from this watching this little process video and let me know in the comments below what you think of my art i hope you're having a fantastic lovely day please stay safe and healthy out there if you can and i shall see you in my next video bye everyone